now that we have actually talked about the like basically qualitatively analyzed the operation of a MOSFET and we saw that how the behavior or like how the operation changes by increasing gate voltage and by changing drain voltage, um, let's actually try to find out find the expression that describes the current flowing from source to drain of this MOSFET for these different regions of operation, like before the pinch off and then after the pinch off and see how they're actually different and why well, this pinch off thing is actually so interesting. Okay, so to calculate the current, I'm going to do the same thing that I did when I was actually trying to calculate the current of a diode, right? Remember, um, I had a piece of semiconductor and I tried to actually calculate the amount of charge in the uh, in, a, in a small piece of that semiconductor, and then using that amount of charge, I try to actually calculate the current. So first thing that we need to know is that how much charge do I have in my channel, right? Uh, once I actually figure that out, then I'm going to actually use the velocity of that charge and then calculate the current. Um, well, since the charge of the channel is actually there because of this structure working like a capacitor, then I'm going to call Q equal to CV, right? Now, what is C? C is the effective capacitance uh, of this insulator that I have here. I know that um, I'm going to call basically the, uh, I'm going to have a parameter called C ox, which is basically the gate capacitance per unit area, meaning that whatever material that you use is going to have a certain amount of capacitance. So this is my oxide. And this oxide is going to have some basically C ox which is basically expressed in in farads per meter squared or femtofarads per micrometer squared but it's basically representing how much how many farads do i have per unit area okay now if i multiply this by the w by the width of my channel my transistor i'm going to get the well the farads per length or like the unit length capacitor so the c here um I'm going to call it basically, I'm going to define it as W times C ox, and I'm going to write it here. So this is really the C. Why didn't I multiply it by the length? Because, well, the charges are not really distributed equally along the um, direction of my length or along the length of my transistor, but they are distributed equally along the width. As we have discussed before, um, as I move from source to drain, the charge density is going to change depending on the drain voltage. So I'm going to, for now, I'm going to basically only find out how much charge do I have under one little piece. Let's say that this is a very small, like I'm going to call it dx, a very small or like the unit length, uh, or well, since this is for length, I can call it dl, right? dl or dx. So for a very, very small, you can think of it like a nanometer kind of a length or unit length of my transistor, I'm trying to calculate how much charger do I have. And I'm going to calculate it exactly beside the source. So this is source. Let's say this is drain. I'm going to uh, calculate it exactly at the source. So it would be basically, if I want to be more precise, it would be exactly here, right? Why do I want to do that? Because I know exactly what's the voltage difference between gate and that point. It's going to be the VG minus VS, right? I know that voltage because for any other point in uh, along my channel, the voltage is going to be somewhere between the voltage of the channel is going to be somewhere between the source voltage and the drain voltage. So I don't know exactly what it is, but at the source, I know that well, the voltage is going to be the source voltage. Okay. Now, what is the V? Meaning that the voltage across this capacitor, it's going to be well, it's going to be the voltage difference if this is gate, the voltage difference between the gate and that point, right? And since that point is actually the source, I'm going to call that VGS, right? So again, I'm only talking about this little piece of my channel or my device that is just in the neighborhood of my source, right? The first uh, piece of my channel length that is uh, that I see traveling from source toward the drain okay now why don't i say vgs why do i say vgs minus vth because i know that the amount of charge that i have in the channel doesn't depend on the voltage at the gate it depends on because if i have let's say if the threshold of my transistor is 0.5 and my gate voltage is 0.4 i'm not going to have any charge right i'm going to start to have charges when the gate voltage becomes greater than the threshold voltage so 
that voltage, the difference between the gate voltage and the threshold voltage is going to be the important voltage for me to have to calculate how much charge is going to be uh, accumulated in the channel, right? So how many, how many free electrons do I have there? So the important parameter here is not really VGS, it's the VGS minus VTH, meaning that, again, if my threshold voltage is 0.5, I know that for a VGS of, I don't know, 0.4, I'm not going to have any electrons, right? But uh, for VGS of 0.5 or like 0.51, I'm going to have a little bit of electrons. For VGS of a 0.61, I'm going to have a lot more electrons. And then if I actually increase this VGS, it's going to be, I'm, I'm going to have more and more electrons. Uh, or free electrons in my channel, and then that depends on the difference between the VGS and the VTH, not the VGS only, okay? So that's why I call Q equal to W C ox times VGS minus VTH, okay? Now, Q is the charge density, and it's in Coulomb per meter, because it's not really representing the entire charge, as I mentioned, it's only representing the charge in this unit length. That's why I call it uh, charge density or coulombs per meter okay now if I want to write this equation for well different unit length along the uh, along the channel that I have and I'm traveling from source to drain I know that this VGS is not going to be the voltage difference between gate and that point of my channel the difference is going to be well the difference between VG and that VX that I have here right so it's going to be basically well assume that source is ground so it could be vg minus vx if source is not ground then it's going to be vgs minus vx okay so i can actually change this equation to wc ox vgs minus vx minus vth so now this is the expression that is valid for any of these unit length uh kind of pieces that i can imagine uh, when i'm uh, traveling along my channel from source to drain okay and then well as i mentioned vx is really the potential uh, at any point in the channel so the potential at, at uh, point x and we know that it changes from zero to vd assuming that like well source is zero drain is vd as we move from source to drain and then for now i'm assuming no channel pinch off so like i'm assuming that uh, when i get to vd i'm gonna have basically uh, I'm still going to have some free electrons. I'm not going to have any pinch-offs. We're going to talk about what happens when we have pinch-off in a, in a couple of slides. Okay, so this expression really represents the charge density of my channel at every point along the channel. Okay, now if I want to calculate the current, I'm going to use the same trick that, I, as I mentioned, I, I used with uh, diodes. I'm going to assume that I have this bar of uh, semiconductor material with, uh, with a specific width and length and height and basically I've applied some voltage V1 across it and I know that for this uh, for this basically if I want to calculate the current in this in this semiconductor material due to this voltage I know that the current is given by the total charge that passes through the cross section of this bar in one second right so if the carriers uh, move with a velocity of V, let's say, so this V that I have here is really velocity, and uh, it's in meters per second. So if my carriers are actually moving at a velocity of V meters per second, then the charge that is enclosed in the V meter along the bar passes through this cross section uh, in one second so at t equal to t1 all this charge is enclosed in in this this area are going to be moved to basically after one second all of this charge is going to be passing through this cross section and i got basically all of uh, the basically coulombs that are actually have passed should be taken into account for my current calculation right so since the charge that is enclosed in v meters is equal to uh, basically well q times uh, this velocity i'm going to basically say that my current is going to be i equal to qv so like if i can calculate this q i know that uh, basically q times that v is going to give me the current okay now what is the v what is the velocity well i know that the velocity is actually um, 
um, I've seen this before, if mu is actually my mobility, for electrons it's going to be negative mu n times E, E being the electric field applied, right? So what is electric field? How do I calculate that? Well, I know that electric field is going to be dV over dx, so I'm going to have, uh, or like basically negative dV over dx, so I'm going to get a positive mu n over, times dV over dx, okay? Now, how do I get the Q? Well, I calculated the Q from the, in the previous slide, so this is my Q and this is my velocity. So I multiply them by each other, therefore I can get the density of my current. Why do I call it density? Because it's only for one little piece of, uh, basically it's, it's per unit length. I have to actually, uh, the charge that I actually have here is not really the charge, it's the charge density per unit length. Oops. Now, if I want to calculate the current, then I have to actually integrate over the from x equal to zero to x uh, to x equal to, to l, right? And then since I'm actually integrating uh, with my parameter being the vx, then I know that at zero at the source, my vx is going to be zero, and or like v source, and at the drain, I'm going to have a vx that is well, VDS, right? Whatever is the difference between drain and source. So if I actually integrate, like basically do the calculate this integral, I'm going to get to this expression, which is really representing the uh, current of my transistor when the transistor is turned on and also when it is not pinched off. We haven't actually talked about that yet. So before the pinch off, before I've actually increased VD beyond a certain point that the pinch off happens, this is the expression that describes my the current that is flowing from drain to the source of my transistor. Okay. Now looking at this, you can see that it has a kind of a parabolic uh, behavior. So it actually goes up and it reaches a certain maximum. You can imagine that if VDS initially, because VDS is actually small, uh, by the way, I'm actually uh, plotting it with x-axis being VDS and y-axis being the current. If VDS is small, then you can imagine that VDS squared is going to be smaller than VDS. So initially, as, in, as, in, as we increase VDS, because this term is actually much bigger than VDS, uh, we're going to have an increase in the expression of the current. But at some point, we max out. And you can imagine, you can imagine that if VGS minus VTH is actually constant, if I increase VDS... Uh, to a very large number, then, well, this term is going to be much bigger than this term. So um, I can project that um, the current is going to go down after a certain peak, right? Where is that peak? Well, I just need to do DID over the VDS. Then you can see that, well, all the stuff that I have here, and make that equal to zero, by the way. Make the derivative equal to zero, that will give you the peak of your curve, right? So all these stuff are constant. VGS minus VTS is also constant with respect to VDS. So what I'm going to get is basically, let's say I call all of this stuff K. It's going to be K times um, 2 times VGS minus VTH and then minus 2 VDS. This is equal to 0, therefore... Uh, to make this equal to zero, VDS has to be equal to VGS minus VTH. So at VGS minus VTH, at VDS being equal to that, I'm going to have basically the maximum of this current.